It was a lifetime that spanned almost 80 years, and in that time, Hank Greenspun left his mark on Las Vegas. His legacy lives on with the family he left behind and the community he helped create. His induction into the Nevada Business Hall of Fame is appropriate given his many accomplishments. It's flattering, and it is. It's important that my dad, frankly, be recognized for having the kind of instincts it took to help make this town grow. Herman Milton Greenspun was born August 27, 1909 in Brooklyn, New York. His father, a scholar, was described as too kind to succeed in business. His mother was the example for the family. And she probably had the, the greatest impact on my father growing up. Annabella Greenspun taught her son hard lessons about standing up for yourself. So he learned those lessons as a young man. Uh, and he also learned lessons uh, that adults were probably as cruel, if not crueler, uh, than, than kids. And when those lessons uh, hit him in the face, so to speak, my grandmother was there to make sure that he didn't back away from those fights. It was a lesson that Hank would carry into his adult life. If you ask the people who, who knew Hank Greenspun growing up in Las Vegas back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, the one constant was he always fought for the underdog. Education was of the utmost importance in the Greenspun family. Hank got his law degree from St. John's in Brooklyn in 1934. In the spring of 41, he was drafted into the Army where he took up writing for the camp newspaper. During his assignment overseas, he attended a wedding for another Jewish officer. There, he met Barbara Ritchie, the woman who would eventually become his wife, but it took some convincing. Well, he went to the wedding and he saw my mother, who was a friend of whoever was getting married, and he walked over to her and he said, I'm going to give you 24, he had already asked him who that was, he said her name is Barbara Ritchie, so he walked over to her and he said, you've got 24 hours to tell me whether you're going to marry me. And she looks at him and says, you're awfully rude, what's your name? <laughs> His name eventually became hers. Barbara and Hank married in 1943. Together they have four children, daughters Susan and Jane and sons Danny and Brian. After the war, Greenspun planned to return to New York and practice law. Instead, he got talked into a road trip to Las Vegas to look into a possible business deal. Believe it or not, right. 1946, some guy said Las Vegas would be a good time for a racetrack, good place for a racetrack. Two or three people have done that over, over the years. Uh, two or three uh, horse tracks and a dog track, none of them have made it. Uh, good thing my dad didn't go into the horse racing business. Good thing he did come to Las Vegas, though. In his autobiography, he writes, it was love at first sight when he arrived. Now, he knew that he was in a great place. He was one of those few people out here at the time in Las Vegas who knew that this was going to be something. He checked into the last frontier, called his wife, asked her to pack everything, and join him out west. When he came out here, while he was studying to take the bar, he needed to make a living. So he started a little magazine called Las Vegas Life. It was America's only five cent entertainment magazine. Years later, Greenspun Media would produce another publication with the same name. From the time he got here, he worked several different jobs. Among them, publicity agent for the Flamingo Hotel, operated by Bugsy Siegel, and partner in a new radio station, KRAM. And it was only in 1950 when the uh, Review Journal had locked out the printers and the typesetters um, and the union started a newspaper to keep the, you know, their union members working um, that the opportunity presented itself to go into the daily newspaper business. Greenspun bought the tri-weekly rebel newspaper called the Free Press. He renamed it the Las Vegas Sun and turned it into a daily paper. On June 21st, 1950, he published his credo, part of which said, I will always fight for progress and reform, never tolerate injustice or corruption, never lack sympathy with the underprivileged, always remain devoted to the public welfare, always be drastically independent. I think those words meant everything to him. His newspaper meant everything to him. His front page column, Where I Stand, became the talk of the town. People waited for the morning paper just so they could read what Hank was thinking. And Greenspun wasn't afraid of a good fight. He took on high-ranking political officials, even the mob, all through the power of the pen. Do you think he had any idea of what kind of power 
what kind of influence he actually had in this city? Sure. He did, and, and he, was, he, he was careful. He wasn't careful in what he said and what he wrote, but he was careful in the way he, he, um, he handled this power. Mm -hmm. He knew that it was a very uh, potent weapon. But it was a weapon also used to produce positive results. He supported anything that had to do with educating young people. UNLV received much of the money from his estate. His name lives on at the university through the Greenspun College of Urban Affairs and the Hank Greenspun School of Communications. He would have made sure as best he could that young people had an opportunity to be educated. But it wasn't just Hank Greenspun's education that helped him make a difference in Las Vegas. It was his unbelievable foresight of where this city was headed. My dad was, um, he was, he had great vision, incredible vision. He could just see things. Greenspun spent a lot of his money investing in land in Southern Nevada. Modern day Green Valley is built on much of that acreage. Greenspun never expected it would actually be developed in his lifetime. He always thought his great grandchildren would be the first to see it. Still, he envisioned parks and homes and churches. We talk about visionaries all the time, but boy, I'll tell you what, there weren't too many like Hank Greenspun. You, know, you didn't come to Las Vegas when there were 16,000 people and assume or believe that there'd be a million or two million one day. It just didn't happen in this country, especially with what Las Vegas looked like then. Las Vegas looks a lot different thanks to Hank Greenspun. He eventually got into the television broadcasting business along with cable TV. When a fire destroyed the Sun's offices in 1963, Greenspun wasn't phased. He knew he had no other choice but to rebuild. Hank died of cancer in 1989, but he left behind a family that continues to contribute significantly to the Las Vegas community in the spirit of Hank's fight for the underdog. I'm a son, so I look at my father a little differently than a lot of people do. But I don't think anyone can, can quarrel with the notion that amongst a handful of people in the history of this town, certainly the last 50, 60 years, no one was, was more influential in helping it to grow the right way, as Hank Greenspan was.